Windows Server 2025 comes with a role, a server role, called IIS, or Internet Information Services, that allows you to host websites. And I'm going to show you how to configure it. I'm not going to show you how to create a fancy website or anything like that. This is all about managing the web server service instead. So I'm going to show you how to do that by clicking on Add Roles and Features, and the Add Roles and Features wizard shows up. And I'm going to continue to click Next until I get to my server roles. And there they are. Now I'm going to choose Internet Information Services, which is called Web Server IIS, in the server roles. And when I click that, I also get the option to add features. Now you're going to need to add these features that go along with it. And in this case, it's just the tools to manage the console. So I'll click Next. I don't need any additional features at this time. And I'll go ahead and continue clicking Next until I get to Install. Now, before I do that, just to show you, these are all called Role Services. So when you install a server role, sometimes they come with what's called Role Services, or basically just subcategories to your server role. So by default, you have everything you need to create a basic website. But you may decide you want to add additional things here as well if you need to, such as you could choose HTTP redirection to redirect a site to another location or custom custom logging, things like that. I don't really need that just to create a basic website, so I'll just go ahead and click Next and Install. And the installation usually only takes a minute or two. And then I'll go ahead into the new console that shows up that allows me to manage these websites. While this is installing, I'm going to open up File Explorer, which is this little picture of the folder at the bottom. And you're going to notice in the root of the C drive, there's going to be a new folder. And it's called INET Pub. And this gets added once you install the Internet Information Services. So let's go ahead and double click on that. And you can see the installation is progressing, which is great. But take a look at www.root. This is where your default web page is going to be. Now here you can see it comes automatically with this IIS Start page. And there's, there's a couple of different files in here. This is the page that is used as the default website before you even create any new websites. And inside of that is this picture, this IIS start picture. This is just the picture that shows up in the website page. So I'll go ahead and double click on the website page. And here you can see there's the website page. So this is just the default page that shows up when you install IIS. Let's go ahead and click close. And now I'm going to go to tools. And we see a new manager here, Internet Information Services. So after installing the web server IIS role, you'll see Internet Information Services in this list. Now you can see at the top left, this is the name of my server, which is kind of a long name. I should have probably renamed it. You also see something called application pools. Now you don't see a lot of pools here yet, but if you install other third party products or add some additional role services I showed you earlier, then it will add additional application pools to this list. Now there's not a lot you do with application pools. If you'd like, you can right click on them. You can choose stop and recycle, things like that. Other than that, you don't really mess with the application pools all that often. I'm going to expand sites and click on the default website. This is the default website that shows up when you install Internet Information Services. So I'm going to open up my web browser once again, and this time put in the name of the site, which is going to be the name of my server. If it's a really long name like mine is, I could also you know, fix that by just typing in localhost. Localhost always redirects you back to whatever the name of the server is. And I press enter and there's my web page. So I've created a web server and I've also uh, created by default automatically created this web page where it goes once it's installed. But that's not what you want for your website. So let's see what we can do to make that a little bit more custom. You probably don't need authentication for a website, but I'm going to double click on it. You can see anonymous is automatically enabled, and that's what you want. Now, if you're creating a secure website, then you're going to want to disable this and then go in and make changes so you have a site that you can log into. Now, I'm not going to do that for this particular uh, video, but if you want me to show you how to do that, just go ahead and leave that comment at the bottom, and I'll show you how to create a secure site with logins and things like that.
Now the document that is the default, if I double click on it, you can see it's going to be any one of these. So it's going to choose default.htm first. If it doesn't find that, it'll go to default.asp. If it doesn't find that, it'll go to index.htm, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if it doesn't find any of these, then it will just show up with, as an error. So if I go back into my web page here, we know that this particular file is the IIS start site. So let's let's go ahead and go to options and make sure we're looking at those file extensions because it only shows me IIS start. It doesn't show me what the full name is. So I'll click on view and scroll down a little bit. And I'll uncheck hide extensions for known file types. Click OK. And now we see this is IIS start.htm. And that's the last file that we see in our list. But I'm going to create a new page instead. I'm going to create a new text document and I'll just call it my web page. And you can see it's .txt. I'm going to open that up and say, welcome to my web page. It's actually a website, but that's OK. This is a single page of a website. So I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to change the extension. So right now it's set to TXT, but since it's a website, I want to do HTM or HTML either way. And I'm going to say, yes, that's what I want. So now my web page is my web page.htm. So I need to go back into my default document and say that I've got a new page. So I'll click on add and I'll call it my web page.htm and click OK. And it puts it at the top. Now, if you don't see it at the top, you can go ahead and move it there simply by uh, going ahead and clicking it and clicking move up if you want. And we'll say yes, move it up. Or we'll say, you know, you can move it back down again, that kind of thing. So just go ahead and look to the right and you can move things up and down. So now instead of using iastart.htm, even though it's still on the list, it's going to show the mywebpage.htm, which is what I want to show. So if you're creating your own website, you're hosting it on this Windows server, you're going to want to have your web page, whatever default page you want to have, in the top of that list. So I'm going to go back to my uh, web browser that's pointing back to my server. I'm going to refresh and see if it picked up my web page.htm. So I'll press F5 to refresh. And there it is. Now it's showing welcome to my web page, which is the new custom page that I added in. Not super fancy, but it just shows you how to host however it is you want to do it. Now, most websites nowadays are not being hosted on a uh, website that is HTTP. And it's mostly HTTPS, which is a secure site. And you can see by default, it's just going to do HTTP on port 80. So what do I want to do? Well, I've got to uh, add in an HTTPS or a security uh, certificate for this as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose, yep, I want HTTPS. And I'll just leave the host name blank. That's fine. If you have a specific host name, you can type that in. And now I need to choose a certificate. So I have not created a certificate, so I can't really uh, add that in at this time. So typically what you would do is you would go and purchase a certificate and then you would import it into this site. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and create a certificate instead and just go ahead and enter that in. And here are the three different commandlets I'm going to type to just create a quick self-signed certificate. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be uh, supported as far as trusted by all different web browsers, but this way I can make my site use SSL, which is more secure, even though I'm not using a public certificate. Now, a public certificate is going to be needed where you can be purchased at, at any one of many different places like GoDaddy or Network Solutions. And I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this first commandlet to create my certificate. And I'm creating a certificate in PowerShell. So I just went ahead and did that. I'm going to go ahead and change this to test cert two since I've already created a one. And there it is. It's test cert two. And then there's my thumbprint, which I'll show you in a minute why you need that.
Now I'm going to go ahead and add in a password to this because I want to make this exportable using a PFX type of extension, which is going to be needed for our website. So I've gone ahead and done that. Now I'm going to be exporting this uh, certificate I just created, and I'll put these in the comments for you. And now I'm going to need to uh, replace the old thumbprint with the thumbprint that I just got right here. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to paste it in. Very good. And that's why I need to use the actual thumbprint of the certificate that was just created, which is a unique uh, number that comes up each time. So there it is, myweb.pfx, and it's in the root of the user's administrator folder. Oh, there it is right there, my web PFX. Okay, so now I want to import this so I can have a secure website in IIS. So I'm going to go to SSL certificate. I'm going to click select. And there's my test cert 2, which I just went ahead and added. And I can go ahead and click OK and OK again. And now I can choose my test cert 2 from the list. And you can choose some of these other ones too to increase security, but I'm not going to show you that at this time. It's not really necessary for this particular exercise. So I'll click OK and click close. Now I'm going to go back into my web browser and you can see that there's no HTTPS here. So it's really just showing HTTP, which is uh, an unsecured way of accessing a website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to HTTPS colon slash slash. And I'm going to get a warning about this, but that's OK. And that's because my certificate was self-signed. I'll go ahead and click Advanced and click Continue. And now I'm using HTTPS for my local host. And again, it's self-signed, so it says it's not secure, but it is a good certificate because I created it myself. So that is how we create a website using IIS, or Infor Internet Information Services, using both HTTP, HTTPS, create your own custom document, enter it into the www root folder, and you can go ahead and now make your fancy website using whatever application you'd like, and just drop it into the www root uh, folder, and then just make that default document your top document in this section. There's lots of other features within IIS, and I'll certainly go through those in upcoming videos. But this is how you create your website using IIS.